Ten miles off the coast of Bermuda, a select group of America's top marine scientists are hard at work. They're here for a month-long expedition to study the animals of the deep sea, some of the least known creatures on Earth. Report the heading coordinates. Report your depth every 50 meters. National Geographic photographer Emery Kristoff and shark specialist Dr. Eugenie Clark have spent years preparing for this project. The big ones are the females. We have yet to see a female. Hope we see it on this guy. This project is called the Beebe Project because it's the first time since the 1930s when William Beebe went down in this area off the coast of Bermuda that anyone has attempted a major study of marine organisms in the deep sea by going down and looking at them. Yeah, that's a Roger. More than 50 years ago, when William Beebe began working in these waters, his only glimpses of deep sea life were mangled creatures brought to the surface in nets. Over and over, he dragged his nets through the deep, but the intriguing harvest only increased Beebe's desire to see these animals alive in their world. His need to go deep sparked an idea, a crude steel ball called the bathysphere, designed by Beebe's partner, Otis Barton. To test it, they lowered the 5,000 pound sphere into the sea. It was far from perfect. When it finally came up empty, Barton and the six-foot BB climbed into the tiny bathysphere. It was a cramped ride, but it took them to a world no man had ever seen. BB wrote, I shall never experience such a feeling of complete isolation as when I first dangled in a hollow pea on a swaying cobweb a quarter of a mile below the deck of a ship rolling in mid-ocean. He went down there, hung in that ball for hours and just looked out quietly in the deep sea. Of course, they had to be very careful that that ball didn't hit up against uh, an undersea mountain. So they had to hang it out in mid-water. And that's where you find the least number of organisms. Even in mid-water, B.B. saw plenty. Connected to the world above by telephone, he described the strange life he saw outside his porthole. The public was captivated by animated drawings from his dives. exploration. Though technology has come a long way since Beebe's time, the world of the deep remains largely unknown. Using a sub called the Pisces 6, converted for research by international underwater contractors, some of the scientists are after a deep dwelling shark called the six gill. They will need specialized camera and tracking equipment to photograph and follow these rarely seen sharks through depths that may approach one mile. The Pisces will descend along the undersea mountain on top of which sits Bermuda to the unexplored world below. Dr. Clark will attract the six gill shark to the sub by setting up what amounts to a restaurant for them, a cage baited with tuna and placed on the seafloor. Acoustic pingers attached to a shark's tail will give another scientist a first look at their day-to-day -day traffic patterns. A different project measures organic sediment falling to the ocean bottom, gaining information that will help assess the dangers of dumping waste into the sea. 
Other researchers work at a platform buoyed a thousand feet deep, studying the jelly-like animals found in the middle layers of the ocean. The biologists who study the midwater dive in another state-of-the-art sub called the Johnson Sea Link. On one of their dives, Dr. Larry Maiden finds a strange red animal, probably a new species. Very few things of this size and color and shape have been described, and we're working right down, right off the bottom, uh, at about 3,000 feet in the same place where William Beebe did his dives. We're seeing some of the same things he saw, although I think this is probably nothing that he ever reported. So this is the first time we have more or less the whole specimen, and a lot of uh, observations of how it behaved in the water at depth. In fact, the big one yesterday tried to, tried to eat the submarine. These are just mystery animals, uh, and that's the first time anybody's seen it do anything. And only the second time it's really been seen alive. The animals of the midwater are the most numerous on Earth, a critical link in the ocean's food chain. Captured with an underwater suction tube called a slurp gun, they are brought to the surface for further study. The best specimens are passed over to wildlife artist Glenn Lotz. It's extremely important to see these things first before you have an opportunity to work with them later, either in a lab or uh, with the living animals. And I've always done that with my work. I've always gone to where the mammal was, or the bird for that matter. Lotz has joined the BB project, hoping to be the first artist to actually see these animals from a submarine. His paintings form an important record of a rarely seen world, catching details, color, and information that even photographs cannot capture. The project is well underway, but after two weeks at sea, a front moves in from the eastern United States. It is too dangerous to dive, and all scientific work is in jeopardy. We have been here now 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We have eaten six days here. And all the promising bobs, he has two days, the two days that he was promised, the 20th and the 21st, to try to retrieve his uh, experiments. I'd like to wait it out and yeah. give it a try. And if the weather clears, then we're all, uh, we're, everything's yeah. fine. Then we can move. And we can move in. Okay, well, that's that was that situation the other day. That. I just yeah. want to let you know that if we can get down there for half an hour, there's yeah. a very good chance we'll get the critical part of our experiment done. So we're willing to cut it down to the shortest dive possible just to try to get a, right. a tag in the shark. Swells of this size could smash the sub against the steel hull of the ship. Playing it safe still means no diving. Be advised, storm warning in effect for Bermuda for the next 72 hours. More than a week passes. The team can wait no longer. Sacrificing all the experiments set up in this spot, they pull anchor and head for smoother seas. In calm water at last, both subs prepare to dive.
to search for the six-gill shark. They will descend almost half a mile, looking for a predator that can reach lengths of up to 20 feet. Can we shake that manipulator arm a little bit more? Let's try that. I didn't. That's not much bait there. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, that's a female. Standing on her head now, and she's just nuzzling the sand. So little is known about these deep sea sharks, and they're thought to be rare, but that's just because people don't see them, or uh, they're rarely fished for in any country except Japan as a commercial fishery. So little is known, but I don't think they're rare here at Bermuda at all because every time we come down in the sub, one comes along within the first few minutes. So it must be a pretty common animal down there he here. Is. He's back again, okay. All right, wow. Twin drill. This is Pisces. We have two big sharks outside right now. One's biting on the manipulator arm and trying to get that last piece of tuna. And the other one was over on this side. We had two big heads in the window at one time. It's really terrific. Where do massive sharks like the six gill get enough food to live in that deserted area that looks like a moonscape when you get down in a submarine? What's going on? Is it really that deserted? They find that there is a lot going on, and every dive only provokes more questions. Clark can only theorize that these huge sharks must be both predator and scavenger, feeding on everything from small animals to the massive carcasses of dead whales. The study of the deep sea is still just beginning. These scientists have had a rare look at that hidden world. They have seen animals that William Beebe could only have dreamed of at depths he never reached. For Eugenie Clark, their success has special meaning. As a child, William Beebe was my hero, and I used to read about him going down in the bathysphere, and I wanted to do that too, and I told my family, I said, I'd like to go down and be like William Beebe, and they said, well, maybe you can take up typing and get to be the secretary of William Beebe or somebody like him. And I said, I don't want to be anybody's secretary. I want to be like the William Beebe going down. And, and I can't believe it. Here I am doing just that in the same place. Same place that Beebe went down more than 50 years ago. It's so fantastic. It's a dream come true. It really is. <laughs> 